Okay. So as I kind of mentioned yesterday, um, polar and to a lesser extent the parametric stuff um, uh, kind of shift our paradigm about how we graph things and how we've always graphed things for a very long time. Okay. And polar like really kind of shifts things in, in, in a major way, um, but it's just a slight change. So um, <clears throat> the polar coordinate system. Okay, it still covers the same two-dimensional space as the rectangular coordinate system. <clears throat> Still covers the same two-dimensional space as a rectangular coordinate system. So I mean, you can, you can, and you, if you look there on your um, graph paper, you can see within those circles and stuff like that, you can still see a y-axis and an x-axis in there, right? You still see it, but then um, also on that graph, we have though like some concentric kind of circles to help us graph, and then. <clears throat> some uh, specially, specifically marked kind of angles too as well, okay? So the X and Y coordinates, like they're still there, you kind of can still see them, but on top of that we have these kind of concentric circles that are all centered at the origin, <clears throat> okay? And in fact the origin is now known as, it's also known as the pole as well. The origin or pole. Okay. And the x axis is known as the, is now known as the polar axis also. I guess it's like an AKA kind of thing. So x axis is also known as the polar axis. Oops, I should put as. Okay. And we graph a point um, as follows. So, so a polar coordinate is given by r comma theta. Okay. So we still are going to use two numbers to locate a point in the two-dimensional space there. Okay, But these two numbers have a different meaning than x and y. So r is not the same thing as x, theta is not the same thing as y. They're in the same position, like in that you know kind of ordered pair there, but they're not the same thing. Okay. Whereas in rectangular coordinates, the x tells you go left or right from the origin, that amount, and then the y coordinate tells you go up or down from the origin, that amount. Here instead, uh, these numbers have different meanings, okay? The r is a radius, okay, from the pole. And then theta is an angle from the polar axis. <clears throat> okay. And so the way we locate our point, okay, the way we locate our point, and this is something that, you know, kind of like if you remember back when you first learned how to graph, I guess we all, I feel like, tend to find the x coordinate first. You know, we go left or right first and then kind of up or down second. And I don't know if that's just a factor of that x number comes first and the y number comes second. And so we do it in that order if that's just the way it's taught. 
whatever it might be. But in this case, it's helpful to actually find the angle theta first and then go out the specific radius from the pole, okay? So for example, okay, you know, um, we might, you know, go out a certain theta here and then go out a certain distance r and then that would locate our point right there, r comma theta. <coughs> so again, instead of going right a certain amount and up a certain amount, we're going to rotate an angle theta a certain amount from the polar axis and then extend a certain distance r, a radius, from the pole out and then that locates our point. <coughs> Okay, that locates our point. Okay. So let's try plotting some points here. Let's try plotting some points. So now we're going to need our graph paper. So you want to have that handy if you don't have it handy um, already. Okay, and maybe I'll just say. So now we'll just like see graph paper or something like that if you guys want to. Okay, so we'll see our graph paper. So we'll go to our graph paper here. <coughs> and again, just to just kind of to get our bearings about us here, get our wits about us, right? You can see we have the x-axis. There it is. We have the y-axis. There's our pole right there in the center, okay? Here's our polar axis. And you can see that for these R values, they've already kind of like given us, you know, radiuses of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So for example, you know, I can, a radius of one will be any point along this kind of like innermost circle here. A radius of two would be any point along this innermost, you know, the next one, and then three, four, five, six, so on and so forth with those concentric rings. And that's just helpful because, you know, it's hard, like it's easy to see, okay, if I'm going to go two this way, that's two. But if I'm going to go two in a diagonal direction, that could be harder to measure. But this circle, it's just any point on this circle there is a two unit distance of two away from that center. Okay. <clears throat> so let's plot the point, for example. Um, so our directions here, let's say, uh, plot the points. r comma theta here. And so for our first one, <coughs> we'll use um, 2 comma pi over 3. Okay. So we're kind of going a little bit back to the unit circle stuff here, right? Because we have to remember, all right, pi over 3, pi over 3, where we're going to start here, and again, start with, or start by finding theta first. Start by finding theta. Okay, and then um, then find R. Okay. Start by finding theta, then find R. <clears throat> so our theta here is pi over 3. Now you'll notice we have these like little lines drawn for us here, okay? So remembering our theta angles, right? This very first angle here is going to be zero radians or zero degrees, depending there, okay? What's this next little line going to be right here? What angle is this right here? What is it? <laughs> What's this angle going to be right here? If we go out that much. What is it? Pi over six, that's right. Okay, we got pi over six right here. This next one will be what? Pi over four, there we go. Okay, and then pi over three. Ah, there's pi over three, that's the one we want. So we find pi over three. So we, we're gonna be somewhere along this line. And since we're going up, up or out two, we're gonna go in a positive two direction here. So there's one, two, and so there's where our point is located, right there. That's location of the point. 2 comma pi over 3. Okay. <clears throat> we went an angle of pi over 3 there, and we went out a distance of 2. Okay. 
that's how we locate those points. <coughs> okay. Let's try another one here. Let's plot. Let's plot the point three pi. Or sorry, not what I wanted. Three comma negative pi over six. <clears throat> okay, so again, our r is three. Our theta is negative pi over six. So again, we want to locate our theta. So now, from our polar axis, if I want to go negative pi over 6, which direction should I go? Yeah, I'm going to go down or clockwise, right? A positive angle theta means counterclockwise that amount. But since you're going negative pi over 6, we're going to go, we're going to go clockwise that amount. So down from our polar axis here. We're going to go down pi over 6. So that's going to be to this line right here, right? This is a negative pi over 6. Okay, so like... And be somewhere along this line. And again, from our pole, we're going to go out three in a positive direction. So towards out three. So that's going to be right here. Okay. And so there's the point three comma negative pi over six. <coughs> three comma negative pi over six. On the same graph, I want to graph another one here. Three comma eleven pi over six. Okay, with that being r and that being theta, I'm going to use the red here to kind of differentiate. <coughs> Where will that point end up? Where will three eleven pi over six end up? Yeah. The same place. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. 11 pi over 6, right? We're going to counterclockwise, but that's the 11 pi over 6 position right there, right? It's negative pi over 6 away, which is 11 pi over 6. And so it's also going to be the same place. So that's also 3 comma 11 pi over 6. So that's kind of a unique property about talking uh, graphing in polar coordinates is that the same point, the same location, can have different coordinates, right? In rectangular coordinates, if you had different coordinates, that would be a different point. They would not exist in the same spot. But here, the same location can have different coordinates, okay? Different coordinates. <coughs> All right. Let's try another one here. Let's graph... <coughs> um, Square root of 2, comma, 7 pi over 6. Square root of 2, comma, 7 pi over 6. <coughs> okay. So again, we'll locate 7 pi over 6. What quadrant will 7 pi over 6 uh, be in? <coughs> What quadrant that some power is going to be within? Three. Yeah. Okay. It's this guy right here. Okay. So we're going to open up. You know, it's kind of it's going to be. Oops. Sorry. From around this polar axis here, all the way around to here. So there's our there's our line. That's our theta right there. Okay. Gets us to this kind of line. And we're going to go out root two. Okay. So there's no op. Like you know, this is one right here. There's two. Okay, the square root of 2, well, let's see, as a decimal, what is that? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's like 1.4. So we'll just kind of do our best here to kind of graph that. So 7 pi over 6 is along this line. If here's 1 and here's um, 2, we want to go out, you know, a little bit less than halfway. So there's 1.5, so let's we'll say 1.4 is like right there, maybe. So just like with rectangular coordinates, sometimes we have to kind of estimate a little bit about where 
we're going to plot the point because we don't have, you know, a precise value. So we can still estimate it. You don't have to have, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly on point. You can kind of estimate it. So something like that. <coughs> All right. Do a few more here. Two more, and then I'll have you guys uh, try some. Okay. So what if though? So we've seen a situation where our theta is negative, but what if our radius is negative? So for example, if I have a coordinate here, let's say it's <coughs> excuse me, um, negative four pi over two. Okay, negative four pi over two. So first of all, pi over 2, right, that's a right angle, so we're going to be along this axis right here, right? Pi over 2, that's our axis, or that's our, that's our kind of line right there. But we want to go out negative 4. So if I were to go this direction, right, that'd be a positive 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. This right here is the coordinate 4 pi over 2. So which way should I go for a negative 4 then? If up right, outward, right, so here's pi over 2, I go up 4, to, you know, in that pi over 2 direction. But if I want to go in a negative 4 direction, which way should I go? Any ideas? Okay, okay. Yes, I see what you're saying. We do want to go, we actually can graph this point, and we do go down 4, but we don't, don't think of it so much as going down 4. Think of it as kind of like going backwards 4. Like a pause, like so a positive number, you're kind of going forward, you're going in the direction of the angle that, is, that you open towards, right? The, in the direction of the angle. And the negative 4, you're going to go in the opposite direction of the angle that you would open. So 1, 2, 3, 4, we can actually do that, and that's our point right there. It's backwards, basically, from... <coughs> What's another name for this point, though? What would another name for this point be? What would another name for that point be besides negative 4 pi over 2? What else could we call that? Uh, Nick, what do you say? Uh, four, three, pi over two. Yes, very good. And Devin, is that what you're going to say, too? Yeah, very good. Okay, so this point is also 4, 3 pi over 2. So here you see the same point with completely different coordinates, okay? Yeah, the 4 and the negative 4, they're just opposites, but I mean, they are completely different numbers, completely different numbers. Here in the previous one with 2 and 3, at least the r's were the same. It was just the, rate, the thetas that were different, right? So again, the same point, the, you know, the, the r's were the same, but the thetas were different. Here, though, both the r's and the thetas are different, and we still get to the same point. You still get the same point. So it's kind of interesting there. Different kind of coordinate system. <coughs> okay. So, uh, let's see here. We'll do one more here, and I'll do it in the same. I'll do it in the same graph just to save some space here. So uh, we'll do uh, six, and let's put that one as the coordinate. Um, 0, 5 pi over 3. <coughs> okay. 0, 5 pi over 3. Where is that point going to be? Where will the point 0, 5 pi over 3? be located. R is 0 and the theta is 5 pi over 3. Where will that be?
What's that? The pole! Yes! The pole. There it is. Okay, right there. Right. The fact that radius, the R is zero, means we are going zero units away from the pole, okay? And so it doesn't matter what our theta is. If we're going zero units away, it will always be there. Okay, it will always be there at the pole. Okay, of course, zero, zero is at the pole too, but, you know, zero comma anything is at the pole. Zero comma anything is at the pole. Okay, so uh, let me give you guys two to try here. Actually, I just want to give you one to try. So here for this next one, okay, so here's what I would like you to do. Um, plot the point uh, 2 comma 3 pi over 4. Then find two other polar representations... for that point. <coughs> okay. And I'm going to I'm going to say one um with a Pot one, one with r greater than zero and one with r less than zero. Okay, just to add some extra challenge in there. Okay, so plot the point two comma three pi over four, then find two other polar representations for that same point. One of those points needs to have a radius greater than zero. One of those points needs to have a radius less than zero. Go ahead and give that a shot.
Give you like one more minute here to think about this. Again, you should come up with two points. Two points. One, uh, and two points that should be the exact same location as this one. Okay, Give the same location. One where you have a positive radius, one where you have a negative radius. Okay. Um, yeah. Of course, there's an infinite number of solutions to this. I came up with what I thought would probably be the most immediate ones that you always would use. Okay. <coughs> Remember, the ideas of coterminal still apply here, right? Yeah, the coterminal ideas still apply. Okay. So, for example, okay, if I have a location of a point two comma three pi over four, if I want to find another point at the same location, I'll keep the radius the same and I'll just add 2 pi to my original angle 3 pi over 4. So th uh, adding 2 pi is like adding 8 pi over 4. So 3 pi over 4 plus an 8 pi over 4 gives us that 11 pi over 4. So there's one, you know, possibility. Instead of adding 2 pi, we could also subtract 2 pi. So 3 pi over 4 minus 2 pi or minus 8 pi over 4 gives us negative 5 pi over 4. So either of these would work for your positive you know, two radius there, it'll get you to where you want to go. Okay, either going 11 pi over 4, which is once around, and then 3 pi over 4 more, or the negative 5 pi over 4 just means you're going uh, clockwise around 5 pi over 4. And then for your negative radii, that means you really want to get to this, this particular one right here, and then just we're going to go backwards to. So this angle, you could call that 7 pi over 4, or negative pi over 4. Okay, those are, those are kind of like the two quickest ways to get to it, right? And so then we go negative two, we go back from that, from this angle right here. Okay. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? All right. And let me also uh, do one more thing here. We're almost done, okay? But I just want to talk about how we can convert from rectangular to polar, right? We would hope that because these things both kind of cover the same space, they both cover two-dimensional space just in a different way, okay? We've shifted our paradigm now, and, and as a result, when we see Friday, you're going to see some, like, really interesting kind of graphs that result from just changing how we choose to, you know, kind of, like, um, coordinate or, you know, plot on our, on our two-dimensional space, okay? Some more very interesting relationships. Um, so let me talk about that about converting first. We'll go back to our paper here, okay, and we'll just um, really quickly talk about converting polar to rectangular. We actually already know how to do this. We already know how to do this. In fact, we've done this kind of, right? You can think about the unit circle as polar coordinates, kind of. Um, the the radius on the unit circle was always one, and then we had our thetas, right? Our thetas, our specific points, our graph, our angles in the unit circle to help us locate points. So, for example. We know that, you know, the polar coordinate, you know, 1 comma pi over 
six. Okay, one copper pi over six. That was the unit circle. That's the, the x and y coordinates at um, pi over six with the unit circle there. Hold on. Hello? Hi. Can, can do? Mm hmm, fine. Trevor, you wanted in the AP office. Okay. All right. So, anyway, if you remember, right, the polar coordinate 1 pi over 6, that resulted, we know that um, the x and y coordinates there were uh, root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. Okay, so polar coordinates, radius 1 pi over 6, right, became root 3 over 2, comma 1 half, thanks to our knowledge of the unit circle, right? That was the x coordinate and y coordinate there on the unit circle at that same point. <coughs> okay. But of course, you know, that's a lot to remember, and what if we don't have stuff on the unit circle, and what if the radius is not one and all that jazz? Well, here's how we do that. So again, let's take our coordinate plane, and let's think about what we've got here. When we, when we open up a certain angle theta, and we have a certain radius that we go out, and we get to that point right there. <coughs> This point has an x coordinate, right, and a y coordinate <coughs> in rectangular coordinates. So we can, th you know, we can say it's some r theta, r theta, right, or it's also going to have some rectangular coordinates. In rectangular terms, right, we've got this x distance right here, and we have this y distance right here, <coughs> and that gives us the rectangular coordinates. So there is r and theta relate directly related to the rectangular coordinates x and y, right? Opening up a certain angle and going out a certain distance is the same as going right this particular x value and up this particular y value. Okay. Now, what kind of shape do you see here? A right triangle. Exactly right. There's a right triangle in here, and so that means trigonometry applies. <clears throat> so, to find x here, well, using our angle theta, x is the adjacent leg of that right triangle, and r is the hypotenuse, so we have that cosine, I'll write it right here, cosine of theta is equal to what over what? x over r. And we have that sine of theta is equal to what? y over r. <coughs> and then if we multiply both sides by r, we end up with x equals r times the cosine of theta. And we end up here with y equals r times the sine of theta. And so there is how we convert from our polar coordinates to our rectangular coordinates. For any given coordinate r comma theta, r comma theta, okay, the x coordinate at that same point in rectangular coordinates, right, the x rectangular coordinate will just be that radius times cosine of the theta you're given, and the y coordinate will be that radius times the sine of the angle theta that you're given, and that converts the points into rectangular coordinates. If you want to go in the reverse direction, you you would have to. Um, ooh, what do you do there? That's a good question. I'll have to think about that. I don't think we have to worry about that right now. But anyway, um, we can convert from rectangular to polar, okay? I think you'd have to use some, like, mm -hmm. yes, Pythagorean theorem and then some inverse trig there as well to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. But anyway. That's how we convert, okay? Your x coordinate is merely just radius times cosine and theta, and y coordinate is radius times sine and theta. Of course, please be aware here, right, that cosine and sine, that theta, if it's in degrees, your calculator needs to be set to degrees. And if that theta is in radians, make sure your calculator is set to radians. You may have to, like, change back and forth, stuff like that, okay? So um, let's just do a quick example or two here. So, for example, let's... Um, <coughs> We'll just do two. Let's convert um, two comma 
pi, which is an r and a theta, two r, uh, sorry, we'll say two rectangular coordinates. <clears throat> let's convert 2 comma pi to rectangular coordinates. So first of all, if we go to our, or let's see, if we go to our graphs, right, so 2 comma pi, so pi, if we open out, pi is this part over here, and we go out 2 from that, it's right here. Okay, so 2 comma pi is right there. Now, we can probably look at that and say, what are the rectangular coordinates of this? If polar coordinates, it's 2 pi, but what would the rectangular coordinates of this be? Well, what would the x coordinate be here? Negative 2, and what's the y coordinate? 0, yeah, okay. So we can see what it should be. It should be negative 2, 0 in rectangular coordinates. So let's see what we end up with here then. Let's see what we end up with. So we think it should be negative two zero based on the fact that we you know were able to easily see um, where it located where it was located there. But let's just check. So x is equal to two times cosine of pi. Y is equal to two times the sine of pi. Okay. What's cosine of pi? Negative 1 times 2 will give us negative 2. Aha! What's sine of pi? 0 times 2, 0. Aha! And so there's our rectangular coordinates. I'll put like an x and y above it rather than do it that way. Okay. So there's our rectangular coordinates. Same point just translated to a different kind of paradigm, a different universe here, we'll say. Okay. Questions on any of that? All right, then I'm going to get you guys started on your assignment here, okay? Rather than do an extra example. I think we're okay. <coughs> All righty then, your fork. Page 781, numbers 5 through 7, 11, 19, 23, 37, 43.